Welcome back. Adam Gillette is the president of Accuracy in Media. Their primary goal, to expose bias in mainstream and social media. The organization, founded back in 1969, was triggered by the recurring inaccuracies in American media and the need to correct those errors so that you, the American people, get the real story. Joining me now, Adam Goulet. Adam, thank you so much for joining us on Real America. Uh, first, I want to start off and give folks kind of the history behind your organization. This is the longest running media watchdog organization that we have in our entire country. Did I get that correct? That's right. We're one of the first ever nonprofit organizations from the freedom movement, all the way back from 1969, as you said. So tell me how you guys go about finding these inaccuracies. Obviously, it's way different today than it was back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s with social media and technology. Uh, but tell me about your team. How do they research and how do they find these errors and then what do they do about it? Well, it's certainly a target-rich environment. It's hard not to find errors. If there was any challenge that would be out there, it would be finding news coverage that isn't full of incredible bias and inaccuracies and outright lies. So what we do is look at some of the most egregious inaccuracies, areas in which we can have an impact, and we write about them and inform people, but then separately we engage in activism to hold these lying journalists accountable. And when we're talking about activism, do you guys reach out to members of Congress, try to get hearings on this? And besides exposing it, I'm sure, online and talking to folks like us here at One America, where do you push for this besides just feeding the information from your organization? Because we've got to get, obviously, I don't know, laws or something on the books before you could just trust journalists. When I was growing up, you know, we watched Dan Rather, Walter Cronkite, and I never thought as a kid... Is Walter telling me the truth? Is Dan skewing this story to the left or right? So what are we doing about that? Well, that's a great question. With most of these journalists these days, they are bullies who have been throwing punches their whole career and they've never had to take one. So when we reach out to them with activism, they don't know how to handle it. And I'll give you one example. A few months ago, you might recall, Donald Trump was talking about hydroxychloroquine and how it might be a good treatment for coronavirus. Well, one of the most influential news sites, especially for young people, BuzzFeed, ran a story. You might recall a man ate aquarium cleaner because it had chloroquine phosphate in it, right. and the guy unfortunately passed away as a result. Well, BuzzFeed ran with the headline, Man Dies After Consuming Drug Recommended by Trump. It's an outright Nonsense. lie. Yeah, so we sent emails, we made phone calls, we went after him on social media, and they changed the headline. Good for you. Good. By the way, did you go after the very fine people? Because I'll tell you, for the last couple of years, if I have to hear one more real news organization out there use the very fine people and say the president called everyone fine people in Charlottesville, but don't air 36 seconds later when he clarified and pointed out that the fine people were the protesters trying to get the statues taken down and were the people just trying to represent their southern heritage and then called out and denounced white supremacists, KKK, and white nationalists. And then he said it again in a press briefing a couple days later, and he tweeted it three or four times. So please tell me that you have called them out for using fine people, because even the Biden camp is still using fine people. And it's not the truth. Well, they're going to keep using it. It's outrageous. To call it a hoax is kind. It's genteel. It's an outright slanderous lie and smear. Regardless of what you think about the president, we can't believe honest criticisms of him when there are so many lies and hoaxes out there about him. And that does all of, a dis all of us a disservice, regardless of what you think about the president. It's outrageous. Yeah, let's talk about that left and right. You've been doing this a long time. Your organization's been doing it a long time. I'm interested because I started, let me give you a little background here since this is our first show. I started as a combat journalist and working for the Armed Forces Radio Television Service in the United States Air Force. That's my background. Then for 21 years, I worked at small and medium and some large news organizations, local news around the country. And I can honestly say I never, ever in 21 years made a story skew left or right. I gave it right down the middle and I let folks decide. Now, this is a talk show, so it's a little different. I was a local news anchor. But I'm wondering in your research, what do you find more of? Because let's admit, you have some of the networks that skew to the right, but I would say there's only a couple of those and papers, but a lot more to the left. But I don't want to say that because you're the professional that does the research. So in your findings, how many more sources of media, social, print, 
online broadcast, you name it, skew left or skew right? Well, of course, the overwhelming majority are hard left. But what's uniquely different about today's media landscape relative to 20 or 30 years ago is back then you had far less options for your media. You know, talk radio might have been in its infancy. You didn't really have online news. So you had your local paper, you had the six o'clock news, and you had maybe some radio stations talking about stuff. As a result, most of them went for a broader audience. Now the audiences are incredibly fragmented and going for a broad audience isn't a, a way to have financial success in this media landscape. So as a result, each of the networks go for a specific audience and they try to appease it no matter what. MSNBC runs hard left news that they know not to be true, but they know that running stories critical of Donald Trump are more likely to get them higher ratings than stories that aren't critical of Donald Trump. So they'll make stuff up, stuff up if they have to. It's like fan fiction. They're going to do whatever they can because they know there's a rabid fan base who wants to read it. And that's what's dramatically different between now and back then. Back then, they tried to go for everybody. They might have skewed a little left. Cronkite tried to go for mass appeal, even though he had a left-wing bias. Now they're openly lying to people because it's in their financial interest and that's incredibly dangerous. Yeah. You know, Adam, where I see and what really upsets and disturbs me is you used to be able to differentiate between and say, this is a talk show host, this is commentary, this is a pundit, and these are the news folks, these are the journalists, these are the ones giving us the straight facts. It seems to me when you watch the CNNs, the MSNBCs, even the Foxes, all of them now, it's all just a big blurred line. Is that what you're seeing out there in your research? It's not just on TV news, it's on all levels. You know, first it became that the editorial page of your local newspaper might have been left wing, but then it became every page is the editorial page. Open up most daily newspapers. You can't tell the editorial page from a quote unquote news story. And with many of them, you can't tell a news story from, an, uh, from a piece of literature you might have gotten from a political party. And some of the most influential news outlets are really blending activism and journalism. Now this, which is an incredibly influential news site, particularly with young people, Half of their executive teams, they brought in executives from the DNC, they brought in executives from the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Stacey Abrams campaign. Are they activists or journalists? Who could tell the difference? Yeah, and how about those fact checkers that are now fact checking social media, fact checking every time the president says something, tweets something, whatever. And, and I'm the first to point out, by the way, that I don't always approve of everything that our commander in chief is tweeting or saying, but. I'm just wondering where they're getting these folks and how do they background them to be a fact checker? And do they have supervision? Because if the fact checker skews to the left or the right, then they're going to use their opinion when they're fact checking. At least that's what I've been seeing. How about you? Well, it's... It's the exact same old thing with each of these outlets. They have an audience and they're going to create content that's appealing for that audience because that will get the clicks, that will get the ratings, that will sell papers if anybody's buying papers anymore. So their interest isn't fact because that's not in their financial interest. These audiences are so fragmented. These media companies are hurting so badly for money that they're going to write whatever will appeal to their base of readers ideologically. It's incredibly unfortunate, and that's what we're dealing with. Adam Glitt, president of Accuracy in Media. We want to thank you so much for joining us on this first show of Real America on One America News. Uh, where can people find you? You want to throw a plug in there, the website, social media pages, so they can track down what you're doing out there to keep information straight, fair, and honest? Of course, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Our website is aim.org. If you don't want to just be angry with the fake news, if you don't want to just be angry with corruption in politics, Go to our website, aim.org. We have steps where you can take action, hold these politicians accountable, and send direct messages to the editors who are approving this fake news each and every day. Yeah. Adam, thank you so much for joining us here on Real America. We really appreciate it.